Hey everybody, Kuru Paul here. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you the story of Dan and Spring, a couple who moved from Canada down to Mexico looking for the laid back lifestyle that, well, I came looking for. But unlike myself and many other expats who end up in gated communities and condos next to golf courses, they went a completely different route. What they did is buy land back in the jungle near Acomal, Mexico in the state of Quintana Roo. They subdivided it and built these really cool ship and container houses. Now, these houses, they're neat, but what's really neat about them is they are completely off the grid. They have their own power system, which is run by Tesla batteries, which is also very interesting to me, and water systems, everything else. So in this video, you're gonna hear their story in their own words. They're gonna give us a tour of their home, and you're gonna kinda of see how the power structure is set up for these off the grid homes. Now, if you like videos like this one, all I ask is you take the time to hit the like button. It just helps me out with that whole YouTube algorithm. All right, so I'm out here with Dan. Dan, if you want to tell us a little bit about, you know, your experience here, about yourself and how you end up here in Mexico and what you're doing out here in the middle of the jungle near Acomal. Uh, okay, well, we uh, uh, originally decided we wanted to move down here about 2016 and uh, from Canada. Uh, bought uh, this hectare of land uh, for you uh, folks from the U.S. that translates into about two and a half acres. Ah, well, thank you for that. Cause <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, so when we bought out here in the jungle, uh, there's uh, this, you know, zoning of Ur Urbano Rustico. So it's, it's kind of a little bit raw dirt roads, and, uh, but there's electricity here. And uh, when we bought the land uh, from the uh, original owner, you know, it was with the uh, electrical rights included to hook up, you know, to the electricity that was here. And so we proceeded to do so. And then we were cut off from it in January of 2018. And uh, the, to come to find out here in Mexico that, you know, electrical grids can actually be privately held when land is uh, developed. And uh, so the, the, the commission for federal electricity doesn't necessarily put the infrastructure in. So the developer does, mm -hmm. and it's then, uh, uh, you know, up to them when they donate it back to the CFE. And this line had never been donated back uh, in a recent uh, uh, chain of events. It actually just finally happened. So we're talking uh, how many years later? Four years later. Four so years later. So you had no idea this was going to be a problem. No, no, it didn't occur to me. I mean, that you know, uh, uh, any kind of medium or high voltage electricity could be owned privately. It's just uh, not something that you'd ever see in Canada or the U.S. Oh, no. So uh, anyway, so we went about uh, devising a, a solar system, which I had, you know, kind of originally played with a little bit of solar in our travel trailer experiences of uh, uh, for many years back and uh, put together an original system, which had uh, 20 panels and about a, a 16 golf cart batteries. And, um, and golf cart batteries have been uh, the Achilles heel of off-grid living. It's, it's not easy, they, they require a lot of maintenance, they don't have a very long lifespan. Uh, how, long, how long can you typically keep a battery then? Typically, they'll, they'll, go, they'll only last for maybe three to four years. Oh, okay. and, uh, and in this kind of a climate down here, uh, of course, uh, you know, you have to put distilled water in them continually uh, and, and the heat makes things evaporate, of course. So uh, the maintenance aspect of it is not fun. And uh, so we, we, we finally this year uh, got on to a new revolutionary kind of uh, deal with Elon. <laughs> <laughs> with Elon. You had him on the phone, you're like, yeah. hey, need well, some help down here. Yeah, well, Powerwall was something that we had originally looked at, uh, but, uh, you know, which ba same battery technology in a Tesla car, but not readily available. He hasn't, hasn't done a very good job of getting that product to market, uh, you know, in an efficient way. If you try to order a Tesla Powerwall, it's very, uh, I, I, think, I, think, I, I still think that they have an undetermined delivery date mm. on them. So I started looking at the numbers of the actual car batteries. And it occurred to me uh, that I could use them in a uh, off-grid system because of the voltage on them. They, they kind of fit perfectly if I put two of them in pair. And because uh, most of the solar systems run on 50 volt systems or 48 volt systems, mm -hmm. and each battery is 25 volts. And so it just occur occurred to me, of course, that if I put two of them together, there's my 50 volts. And then, you know, I can rack more of them if, as I need them. And, uh, so we tried it in May. It just and occurred to him. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would just occur to me. But. 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, it's a, a very, very interesting thing. Very easy uh, living, actually, with, with this new system. The basics of how system works is that there's a, a nine uh, solar panels on the roof. They're 540 watts each. So together they, they generate very close to 5,000 watts. So wiring all from the panels come down through here. They have their own breaker system if we do need to shut down the power from the roof. And, uh, and then into the power goes into this charge controller. Uh, this particular one is made in America. They're very high, high, high quality. Uh, they, you know, these kind of things all come in a range of pricing, of course. So, and these ones are very, very good. Uh, so uh, they'll handle a tremendous amount of power. Programmable. Uh, they have an app that you can track. You know how much you know electricity you're producing. And uh, so, and then basically what this does is takes that energy from the sun and goes down and charges the batteries and. As I said earlier, uh, basically came up with the notion of pairing them together. So that's one pack basically put together to make up uh, the, the volts required to run the system. And then that's number two there. Oh, okay. And, and then so we just put them together and uh, so that we have four batteries working in, you know, in tandem to, uh, you know, create a 20 kilowatt hour storage system. Um, from there, I mean, basically goes to the inverter because everything in a solar system and everything in the battery pack is no different than in your vehicle. It's all DC and it's all either 12, 24 or 48 volt systems when it comes to direct current. Direct current is not usable with all of our daily uh, household items. So this then converts the direct current power to alternating current and goes to your typical electrical panel. The beautiful thing about these is that uh, uh, these these create clean power. Um, you know, you always hear about power spikes and the dirtiness of the, the system here in Mexico can, it, voltage uh, fluctuations can be actually quite severe here. Yeah, yeah uh, they, they are severe. And, uh, and so we don't have that problem. This is actually, uh, for your electronics and for your appliances and everything else. Uh, these things are pure sine wave inverters. They create beautiful, smooth power. Um, talk about the house. Okay, so the container, shipping containers. Uh, uh, well, Lego was my favorite toy as a kid. <laughs> so they have... Uh, uh, these, these are really interesting to build, uh, and I've wanted to do this for a very long time. Uh, and they, uh, you can do all kinds of creative things with them. And these ones, we stack two of them together. So there's one on the bottom that sits on six pilings and this one that sits on top of the other and the, uh, the two, uh, hardwood logs here, uh, hold it up. And, uh, it's, uh, it's neat. Some of the things that you can do with them. And, uh, we, uh, basically leave everything exposed by way of the plumbing and everything underneath here and paint it to keep that you know industrial look that it has and uh, they're insulated inside with uh, uh, high density foam uh, we don't insulate of course against cold here we're insulating against the heat like you would do with a refrigerator and uh, they're easy to take care of they're uh, easy living yeah, this is uh, our screen room. That's where Dan spent most of his time and during the day. And uh, and in the evening, we have friends over. That's where we have dinners and uh, parties and uh, a great uh, kind of uh, outdoor room. Uh, no mosquitoes because it's all screened. And then they, we had a little bit uh, kind of lights around the edge of the ceiling. So it's uh, really nice. Uh, I love this uh, outdoor indoor living kind of concept. But uh, I wanted to show you the in, inside of our container homes and my favorite one so far. Very easy to clean, but come on in. So this is a little kitchen and then we have a big window, ceiling to floor kind of window. And we put a kind of work station over there. That's where I spend most of my, my time blogging and, uh, and uh, work. A few tone and the friends over on a rainy day if we wanted to stay inside. That's great. Fridge, uh, it's all powered by solar and uh, really functioning very, very well. And we have a, a full-size washroom on the first floor with a bound door, and uh, just to keep a privacy, but also save a little bit of space. And then whenever I finish a swim and come back home, that's where I take a shower. And this is our guest room. 
very quiet, but with the morning sun beaming through the window, it's just a lovely place for our guests. Now let's uh, go to the second floor. The stairs are kind of a very interesting. Uh, it's very wide and spa spacious, and we have a window here, so it's kind of still bright and open. Second floor has a little bit uh, similar structure as the first one, but we did a little bit of modification. So this is our master bedroom. And uh, um, every morning there were birds, like just sitting outside the window on the tree canopy. And they got so close to the window. It's like, I feel like living in a park every day and <laughs> waking up to the birds chirping and singing. So it's really lovely. And here is our open closet. Um, open closet with a hers and a his and he even built a little makeup desk for me which is the first one I have ever had even in a big house back in Canada I never had one so I'm really happy about that facing the window the birds and the monkeys coming to the tree and it's just a lovely place um, this is our utility room where you can see the uh, you can see the our Tesla system and this is his area. I never, I really come in here. The only time I come in here is to do laundry. So during the day, of course, ideally on a sunny day, that's where I do laundry and two loads, no problem. And then we actually, I started using a clothing line, just like what my mom used to do back home. Uh, on a sunny day, once you do laundry, I, I, we just hand the clothes here and uh, the sun is so great here so there's no never problem to kind of have the clothes dry during the day and uh, this is another little space he built just for me i love a hammock and uh, love 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 it so when he built this container home he said i'm going to build you a screened hammock room so this is where i sometimes sit in the afternoon and uh, work on my computers and uh, listen to music and uh, um, it's just so relaxing and totally different than the stressful city living. Well, what about, uh, what about your water system here? Uh, we have a drilled well and, uh, do you want to know what really happened with this? <laughs> it's whatever you want to do. Um, well, <laughs> whatever you think is very interesting. This is a very interesting part of the world. It's uh, uh, the the limestone here. Is a b best description I ever heard of the Yucatan Peninsula is it's 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 uh, like Swiss cheese. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have uh, built a few houses here on this hectare of land now. And the first one, which is right next door, our neighbors have a fantastic well. The you know the, it's coming out of out of the ground and and. Uh, and it's very good, we've had it tested, but then it goes through a whole filtration system mm -hmm. and a reverse osmosis. And then, I mean, it's coming out, you know, as good of water as what you buy at Crystal and the big, the big jugs. And <laughs> so their well is fine. Now their, that well is 200 feet from this one. Yeah. This, the one that we have is at a little bit different depth and we've hit some kind of briny water system. Uh... I can't get the water cleaned up. It's fine for laundry. And it's fine for everything else, showering and all that, but I'm not drinking it. So our RO is unplugged under the sink. Uh, <laughs> so we're- You gonna we're, dig a new one? Yeah, I'm gonna have to actually drill a different one here and see if we're, we, we can pick up a, a, you know, a, a good stream of water again, so. Seems like the, uh, the theme here is if you move to Mexico is some flexibility. Oh yeah, you have to have a little flexibility and a lot of patience. <laughs> a lot of patience. Hey, there's one other thing that uh, for people who live in Mexico and come down here, that the only proof of address that anyone will accept is an electric bill. Right. And since you didn't have an electric bill for years, how did you prove where you lived? Because nobody wants anything else other than an electric bill. The, and the, you don't have a water bill either. So no. You know that. Yeah, we almost don't exist out here. So <laughs> a proven um, a domicilia, as it was, they, they want to, you know, to ensure that you actually live here. 
uh, you know, with vehicle registrations, everything mm -hmm. is, becomes a challenge. So, Banking, uh, everything, yeah. Yeah, so we have, uh, if you don't have a CFE bill, it's just the easy, you know, one document, here's my proof, you know, that I, I actually have a, a residence here in, in Mexico. Uh, it becomes quite onerous, and especially, of course, given the differences in, the, you know, you've talked about it before in some of your previous videos and the way you can uh, hold the property because we can't own it in our name. So you can mm -hmm. do it by way of corp or you can do it in a fee to comisio. Uh, we did it with our corporation that we set up here in Mexico. And uh, so every time I have to prove domicilia, I've got a, a stack of paper with me that's about an inch thick because I don't know what they're going to ask for. They might want, you know, articles of, uh, out of the corporation a corporation document to show that I own it and then, you know, uh, tax receipts for, you know, the property tax here. And uh, so that the paperwork can become quite onerous if you don't have a CFE bill. Yeah. There's always a chain here to, of proof. There is. And it's yeah. frustrating. It's frustrating yeah, it a can, lot of times. Can be, uh, uh, so that's probably, that's the first thing I thought about when he was talking about being off grid. I'm like, how are you even proving where you live? Because that's what they always ask. Even if you bring an electric bill, if it's not within the last two months or something, they don't even want that one. No, that's too old, or that's right. this. Yeah. Very I think I did tell you about the story at a time over a beer. Yeah. Uh, with yeah. the uh, uh, driver's license. Tell them that story. That's a great story. The uh, getting, a, uh, getting my first uh, Mexican driver's license. Okay, show us your current, you know, driver's license from Calgary, Alberta. Okay, it's, you know, it's it, here it is, and it, it's 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 a it's current. I have a current driver's license, and of course, the paper thing was. You, you know, you don't go anywhere without a copy of your passport and your permanent residency card, but I had it on one page. And so he looks at it and he says, no, passport on one page, permanent residency card, front and back on the next page. And then one of these three things, a CFE bill, Aguacon, which is the water, or Telmex, which is a, a telephone line in here, which we have none of. <laughs> and so after a great deal of the frustration, well, no, I've got a bank statement and here's, you know, my tax bill and, you know, here, here, the title to our property. And he's like, no, I need one of those three things. And, and uh, so I call up my friend and I said, I need a copy of your CFE bill. <laughs> so he sends it to me, I take it in. And I said, okay, here it is. I've got my driver's license and my passport and my permanent residency card. And here's a CFE bill in somebody else's name, which is meaningless. And he looks at it and stamp next window. <laughs> they get very particular. <laughs> that's also very Mexico. I get very particular on something. And then they're like, okay, that's good enough. You know? yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. We just have to check, check the box. Five years ago when we first started talking about moving to Mexico, I wasn't really sure, but Dan was the one who, who wanted to come here and uh, spent most of time here over the past five years. Did, do you regret the decision you made it back then? Uh, no, not at all. Actually, it, uh, I wanted to leave Canada because of the, the cold. Uh, nobody, well, some people actually like winter, but I'm not one of them. Uh, it, uh, and uh, the cultural uh, variation is interesting all the time. So we have a cultural difference ourselves. So uh, it, uh, it's always uh, good to keep yourself uh, uh, well-rounded. Yeah, for me, five years ago, I uh, had a very good uh, corporate job and uh, I always lived in the city. So moving to Mexico, living in the jungle was a scary idea to, to me. But uh, when you started taking me here and they show this land and then we started, I started planting some of the fruit trees on the property and I just loved it here. And the people were so nice. The weather is always great. And uh, the food is fresh. Well, we do get the odd hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, I love the food here and the cost of living, that's, which is a big, big thing for me. I'm a pro, you know, chartered professional accountant. So I look at the numbers every day and I say, wow, all the, with all the savings we uh, have, uh, you know, um, accumulated over the years, we could actually live twice as long here than uh, in Canada. And then now we're living on the, in this off-grid house. The cost is even lower than the traditional house. So I'm very, very happy to be here. Well, Thank you, Dan It Walker. had some challenges as far as getting some approvals from the procurement department on, a, on solar equipment to start with because you're prepaying electricity in advance. So that is true. It's still a little, you know, $100, $150 a month expense when you amortize it out. But uh, 
it's all prepaid, so we don't have that bill to contend with anymore. And we don't have to struggle, like how long we're going to turn the AC on. It's just like whenever there's a sunny day, you turn all your equipment on and you don't have to worry about the electricity bill at all. So that is that is very comforting for me. It's a pretty cool house, huh? Um, kind of got me thinking that maybe Linda and I could live off the grid. I never really thought about it before. You know, I did the tour of Dan's place. I think I would have to have somebody set it up, like Dan would come set it all up and it would have to be turnkey. I, I, I don't think I would want to deal with setting up all those systems and go through with what he did, but uh, it is kind of a cool concept. Well, if you have any questions for Dan or Spring, uh, I think for at least a little while after I publish this video, they'll be reviewing the comments, so feel free to leave those in the comments section. So, until next time, hasta luego.